Hi friends, it's Lisa Mears here, and today I'll be adding some sparkle and shine to three holiday cards. I'll be using some new colors of the Tim Holtz Distress Spritz to add shimmer and shine to all of my cards. I'll show you three ways that you can use the Distress Spritz on your cards. These four new colors of Distress Spritz are in addition to the existing 12 colors that were released back in June. And I want to thank scrapbook.com for sending me these new colors so that I can share them with all of you. And as a reminder, if you are interested in any of the products that you see here today, be sure to check out the product links that I have provided in the description box of this YouTube video. So what is Distress Spritz? Distress Spritz is a luminous spray that complements the Distress product line and it adds a vibrant shimmer to your projects. These spritzes contain a blend of pearlized pigments and a clear fluid base and that can be used on porous surfaces such as paper, canvas, and wood. And a nice feature about these spritzes is that they do not react with the reactive properties in the other Distress products. So if you spray it on a background that you ink blended with Distress Oxide inks, it's not going to mess up that background. So let's take a look at these new colors that I received. This first swatch is the Kitsch Flamingo. I swatched it on white cardstock on the left as well as black cardstock on the right. So you can see that you can use it on other cardstocks and you can still see that beautiful shimmer and shine. This next swatch is the Cracked Pistachio. It's a beautiful green color, so you can see the left there is on the white cardstock and the right is the black cardstock. The next color I have is the Prize Ribbon. It's an absolute beautiful bright blue color, so there on the left is the white swatch and then on the right is it on the black cardstock. And then the last color I have is the Seedless Preserves. This is the purple. I have the white cardstock on the left and the black cardstock on the right. Now at the time of filming, I'm not certain if these are the only four new colors that were released today, but as I mentioned earlier, I will have a link down in the description box below and you can check that out to see if any other new colors were released with this new release. But what I do have here are three other colors that I have from their last release and since I have a green, a blue, and a pink from the June release, I did want to bring those out with their swatches so that I can show you how they compare to the previous colors. So this here is the Picked Raspberry compared to the Kitsch Flamingo. So the Picked Raspberry is on the top and the brand new Kitsch Flamingo is on the bottom. So you can see that the Picked Raspberry that was previously released, it's a bit more darker and brighter than the Kitsch Flamingo, which is a more softer pink. And then I also had the Uncharted Mariner from the last release, and I'll pull those swatches out so that you can see the difference and see how they compare to the prize ribbon that was released in this release. And you can see the blues are completely different color blues. The prize ribbon on the bottom is much more bright and more of like a bright royal blue, whereas the Uncharted Mariner on the top is more dull, but it's still a beautiful blue. And then I also have the Twisted Citron, and the swatches for the Twisted Citron, you can see that they have a little bit of the green mixed with, it looks like they could have like a tint of yellow in there, or gold, but you can see that compared with the Cracked Pistachio on the bottom, they are two completely different color greens. And I really love the four new colors that were released today because they are perfect in time for holiday cards. You can totally use that purple for Halloween cards and some of those other colors for Christmas cards, which is what I'm going to do today. Okay, so here I have a piece of the scrapbook.com mixed media cardstock, and I'm spraying three of the colors of the Distress Spritz on this background. I have sprayed the Kitsch Flamingo, the Seedless Preserves, as well as the Prize Ribbon. And after I put a little bit of that Spritz on the background, I am bringing in my heat tool to dry the Spritz. 
before I add another layer. I still have a lot of white on that background, so I will be adding some more spritz to fill up that white space. So I'm just gonna come in and fill in some of the white areas with some more of the Kitsch Flamingo and the seedless preserves, as well as the prized ribbon. So you can see I'm just making a full background of the Distress Spritz. I am using a paper towel just to pick up some of the areas where it's piling up just along the edges, and then using a heat tool just to dry it. Now, I just want to also point out that using a heat tool is not going to move the spritz on your paper like watercolor would move if you used a heat tool with it. So it actually will stay in place and it will just dry on your cardstock. And now once it's completely dry, I have a really pretty shimmery background that I can use on a card. I can also, if I wanted to, take this background and die cut it. Maybe I had a flower die that I wanted to die cut and I can die cut it from this beautiful shimmery background to create flowers on a card or even a word die. You can die cut out of this to create a really pretty color for your words or your sentiments on your cards. But I am going to use this as a background and I'm going to use it in an embossing folder. And the embossing folder that I'm using, it's simply a snowflake embossing folder. This is the Spellbinders Flurry of Snowflakes 3D embossing folder. And I just ran it through my die cutting and embossing machine. And you can see when I take it out of the folder, all of the raised snowflakes that are now on that piece of cardstock. To see my snowflakes a little bit better, I'm just taking a piece of sandpaper and I'm just going over the top of the cardstock where the snowflake design is and I'm just rubbing off the top layer of cardstock so that the white shows through. And this just makes that design really pop. So I'm gonna bring this closer so that you can see, but look at all of those snowflakes with all of that beautiful shimmer and shine from that Distress Spritz. To finish off this card, I'm adding the Happy Holidays sentiment from the Happy Holidays 2 dies from scrapbook.com. I die cut the words out of white cardstock and the shadow out of vellum and I just added the white cardstock to the vellum and now I'm just adding some glue behind only where the white cardstock is showing through that vellum because you don't want to add glue over just the vellum part by itself because that glue will show through on the front side and you definitely don't want that to happen. I'm going to add this card layer to an A2 size card base and then I'm going to bring in my scrapbook.com silver glitter pops of color and I'll add just a little bit of that silver glitter pops of color to the inside of some of the snowflakes and some other raised areas on that embossed background. This pops of color will come out wet but it will dry hard so be sure to let your card lay flat so that it can dry completely before you're handling it. So take a look at that beautiful shimmery background created with three of the Distress Spritz colors. So for my next card, I'm going to be using a stencil. And the stencil I'm using is the scrapbook.com Batty Stencil. I'm spraying some pixie spray on the back of the stencil and then I'm going to add the stencil to the black cardstock. Pixie Spray is simply a low-tack adhesive, so it's going to help ensure that the stencil doesn't move and that it's secure to the cardstock so that when I use the Distress Spritz on this stencil, it's not going to seep underneath those open areas of the stencil. So I'm going to be using the Seedless Preserves Distress Spritz. I thought that would be a perfect color for these bats and I'm just spraying it over top of the bats. Now when I'm doing this, I'm just spraying and kind of moving my hand to the side to get a better coverage over that stencil. You definitely don't want to have too much of the spritz because you don't want big piles of the spritz laying on your stencil because then it definitely will try to seep underneath the stencil. So I went ahead and just dabbed up some of the spritz off of the stencil with a paper towel and then removed the stencil from the cardstock. And there's those beautiful shimmery bats on that black cardstock. I love how this turned out. 
So this stencil is actually a two layer stencil. There's a layer of stars also, and I'm going to go ahead and stencil those stars on that background, but I wanna point out that my background is completely dry. So make sure if you have a stencil that's more than one layer that you do dry your background really well before adding the second layer or it will smear. I'm using my neon lunar paste in the color yellow jacket. I chose this color because I thought that it would really stand out on that black background. So I used a palette knife to get the lunar paste onto the palette knife and added it to the stars. And there's what the background looks like with the stars and bats. So now I'm just gonna add a sentiment for my card and I'm using the sentiment Happy Spooky Season from the Spooky Stamp Set from scrapbook.com. I'm going to stamp it out with some black ink onto some yellow cardstock. I chose the yellow from the scrapbook.com rainbow paper pad because that matches nicely with the stars on the background. And I'm going to fussy cut it out of the cardstock. There is a set of coordinating dies with this stamp set, but I could not find mine. So I'm just fussy cutting it out. And there is a die that will actually die cut this sentiment for you, which is nice. So I added the sentiment up on some foam and I'm adding it to the center of my card layer. I'm going to back it up on some yellow cardstock to bring out more of the yellow in that card. And then I'll add that to a white A2 size card base. I love the way this card turned out with those shimmery purple bats. So moving on to my next card, I'm actually going to start out by ink blending the background. I have a piece of the scrapbook.com mixed media smooth white cardstock, and I'm just adding the cracked pistachio distress oxide ink to the entire background. Next, I'm going to come in with the Distress Oxide Rustic Wilderness ink, and I'm just going to add that darker green ink just along the edges of all of the four sides of this card layer. I'll be using Pixie Spray to add it to the back of my stencil. This is the scrapbook.com Peppermint Forest stencil, and I'm going to use the Kitsch Flamingo Distress Spritz on this stencil. So here I just wanna show you that you can use this spritz on your ink blended backgrounds and it's not gonna make that ink move like it would if you were to spray water on this background, for instance. The Distress Spritz, when used with the Distress Oxide ink, it's just going to sit on top of that cardstock. So here I'm just dabbing off some of the Distress Spritz that just piled up a little bit. And one other thing that I want you to notice is that you can use a different color of the Distress Spritz on top of a different color inked background like I did here. It didn't have to be a tone on tone. It could be a different color. So this is another two layer stencil. I did let my background dry completely and now I'm gonna come in and I am going to add some gold glitter stars to the top of these Christmas trees. And I'm using the scrapbook.com pops of color in the gold glitter color and a palette knife just to get that gold glitter inside of all of those stars. I'll do that for the entire stencil and when I'm finished, I will remove it and look how pretty that background is. You can see the shimmer for the trees and also the glittery stars on those trees. For my sentiment, I'm using the Pretty Pink Posh Merry Christmas Shadow Die. I die cut it out of the gold cardstock from that holographic paper pad. I added that to a piece of vellum that I die cut with the shadow. And I'm gonna use that for my sentiment. I also used a piece of that gold cardstock to cut a rectangle layer, but also cut the center out because I wanted to save the center of that cardstock. The Christmas tree background is gonna go right on top of that. So I went ahead and added the sentiment to the center and added that to a white A2 size card base.
So let me know in the comments which card is your favorite. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like videos like this and want to see more, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to see more techniques on using the Distress Spritz, I will put a video here that you can watch after this one. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.